Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is David. I'm a professional restorer of antiques and artwork in Washington, D.C. And in today's video, I'm going to be restoring an English Regency breakfast table. So I got this table at a local auction here. It's a fantastic table. I really like the wood on this one. It's a really nice piece of mahogany. There's uh, one major flaw with this table, which is I suspect why I got it at auction for such a good price. Uh, when I unhinge this here, you'll have a look at this. There's a split here in the top joint. Uh, right here, it runs right in the center. Now this table consists of a few joints. It's got one, two, three, four, and five separate pieces of wood that make up the top. Um, it looks as though the in it's a really nice table. I love these tilt tops. This one in particular has been, you can see here where they've already, it's had some work done in the past. It's had a couple butterfly keys installed here, here. There's one down here. Um, ironically, where the split is, there isn't one. There should be one here, but it's missing completely. It was never added. Um, this table has a pretty good piece of hardware here. I like the pedestal on it. The turn column is nice. <clears throat> the color here is really, really nice. I love the way that it's bleached out a bit. It's added a lot of character to it, and it's got nice hardware. Love these brass casters um, and the locking pins. So my goal with this particular table is essentially gonna be to close up the gap here in the center of the table. Um, and there's some surface scratches here, which I'm undecided what I wanna do with that. You can see the table itself is bleached out. Um, and then you see this dark spot here that was primarily, that was most likely a centerpiece that sat on this table for uh, a good portion of its life. And the rest of it got affected by the sun, which has bleached it out. Um, I like the bleaching, it sort of adds to the color patina of the table. Um, so I don't know that I'm gonna strip the table and repair that. I think some of that adds character, but at the very least, we're gonna repair this seam. Um, and we're probably gonna clean up the surface and get some of these scratches out of here. But we can do that without stripping it. So I got the table up on the bench. The first thing we want to do is pull the pedestal off the top. So we're going to separate everything here from the top so we can get in here and uh, either jig this up or figure out what we got to do to get the top back together. So this is a really straightforward process. These um, rails are just attached with slot screws um, and this is mounted, this pedestal here is mounted through just with these butterfly bolts. So we're going to pull these out of the way and have a better look at this table here. See what is going on. This hardware seems a little too new to me. I don't think this hardware here is original to the table. It looks a little too new. Plus this table has obviously been worked on before. Um, a lot of these antiques when we get them, they've had various uh, degrees of repair at some point in their life. It's extremely rare to run into an antique that's never had any work done to it. Um, most of these things are items that you know would be in somebody's house, so they need maintenance for the most part. Uh, especially an item like a, a breakfast table, it's gonna get a lot of use. All right, so this should be loose here. We'll just go ahead and take this off and set this out of the way. Really nice base. All right, and the next thing is gonna be just to take these runners here off and have a look. And I'm looking down at this, so I'm just curious as to whether or not this runner is even original to this table. And the holes don't line up. I've got a hole here, but this hole doesn't line with the one on the table surface on this inside, and nor are these other ones. So I don't, I don't think these runners are original to this table. They may, well, they might, it's possible they were flipped around, but they don't look original at this point. Go ahead and take a slot screw here and just pull these out of the way and have a look and see. My hope is that once we take this particular runner loose, now I don't know that we have to take this one off to be honest with you because this side's tight and this gap is pretty well tight except for about here over, so maybe about three quarters of the table. I mean, if I gotta take it off, it's really no big deal. I'll just pop it off. Um, but let's just go as far as we need to and see where we're at. Gluing together a round tabletop can be a little tricky um, to get clamps on it. Um, 
especially if the table, uh, if the joints have warped or, or anything of that nature. If they have and you can't get it to draw off, the only way to really do it is to make a, a big jig, basically, um, that's going to encompass the sides. But you want to get pressure, basically, on this end. So we're going to have to have a jig that's going to catch it from about halfway to here and uh, go tight with the whole thing. So we shall see how that goes. And I can see that it's got a little bit of movement this way, too, up and down. It's not quite flush, it doesn't look like. So we'll see what's going on with this. All right, so let's... I can see here that this rail's been worked on, too. At one point, there was a dowel. There was a dowel right here that's been plugged. I wonder if the same coincides on that side. I don't see it on that side. This wood here doesn't look old. It doesn't look old enough to match the tabletop. Anyway, um, and this hardware isn't old either. So, um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of pressure in here and just see if it wants to go together. If it does, then maybe we don't have to take the whole thing apart. But, you know what, I'm curious. Let's take it apart anyway and see what we're dealing with here. Go ahead and take this off. So as we can see here, uh, we have the, everything off the top. And if you look right here, you'll see this joint's completely compromised. It's, it's opened up. Um, it's got a lot of play here and it looks like it runs. Basically, there's movement in it to about here. I suspect it's probably compromised all the way um, till about this butterfly key here. Um, so we're gonna have to install um, at least two on this side. It should be enough, maybe one here and one here. Um, spread those out a bit. But what we need to do um, at this point is to set up a jig so that we can put some clamps on this and draw this up. Of course, the first thing we're gonna do is the most obvious is I'm gonna run one from the front, uh, the, the front here to the back of the table, just straight across the center and see if putting one clamp on it draws this up. If that does, that would be fantastic. Um, it's, it's likely that it doesn't. And if it doesn't, we're gonna have to create um, a couple clamping blocks so that we can get some pressure on the outside edge of this here. Um, but once we do that and we got it ready to clamp up, the only thing we really have to do is clean uh, whatever old glue might be in between here, which is fairly easy. Get in there with a piece of sandpaper and just um, score it up um, and then just get a clamp on it. Once we get it glued and clamped up and it's good to go, um, we can install new keys. These keys, some of them are done better than others. Um, I can see this one in particular is just a full rectangle. It's not even um, arched out here, the tops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got eight keys already installed in it. Um, it looks like these two to my right are the oldest of them, and they look like they're done really well and nice and tight. These other ones that were done at a later date, you can tell, um, aren't quite as good. Um, I can see that they're not quite flush. Um, there's a little bit of a gap between them as well. And then also I can just see they were touched up with some like blend all powder. I can see that I can recognize that orange blend all powder. Those of you who work with those blend all stains, you know what I'm talking about. That orange, it gives off almost like a green appearance. You can really tell what it looks like. Um, so that's what's going on here. But this, I don't know what they use, but it's, it almost feels like a piece of plywood. I hope that they didn't use plywood on that. But I can hear a hollow tap on it. But in any event, um, so the next thing we're gonna do here is put a clamp across the center and see what we get. All right, so I went ahead and put the clamp across the top and it holds it up pretty well. Um, there's one thing to note here, I guess, when you're doing this is we're gonna have to make sure that the alignment on the top surface down here is good. So I can see here there's a ridge, so I'm, I suspect there's gonna be a ridge on the top as well. So the way to fix that is gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna have, before we do our clamping now, of course we get the glue in there, we're gonna run some wax paper across a block. The reason for the wax paper is you don't want any squeeze out glue to, to stick itself to any kind of a clamping block because then you're gonna have that problem. If you use wax paper, it, the glue will squeeze out of course, but it won't create a problem. So you're just gonna run a board underneath and of course, this is just a mock-up. You're gonna put a board underneath like that, and you're gonna put sort of a deep throat clamp like this underneath. You can get this walked in there as far as you can get it. Uh, this is a 12 inch clamp. So you can get this one in there, get it aligned on your block, make sure you're in place on both sides. There we go. And 
You can do one here as well. So you're going to clamp this up really nice and tight. And the same here, you would just crank this down as tight as you can get it. And we get in here and we can check and make sure that our, but that should be good. And then basically make sure this stays tight and that's all we're gonna have to do. Now, before I put glue in that, um, I'm gonna probably um, get something to set this on so it's, I can feel the blankets in the way here. So we're gonna wanna make sure that the table's up and suspended out of the way so that we can do all of our work without running into things in the way with our clamps and blocks. This is a very, very straightforward process. It's a simple fix, um, all said and done. This shouldn't take any more than an hour from start to finish to get the table disassembled, get the piece assessed, get it glued back together, and then get the blocks off it. And then a matter after that, it's just really a matter of cleaning up and cosmetic repairs. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get our glue out and get ready to go with that. All right, well, it's actually, believe it or not, been about a month since I filmed the last scene and I've gotten distracted with other projects here in the showroom and in the shop. But jumping back into this project and this table, and we're gonna wrap this up. <clears throat> so in the last scene, you see that I basically had this table under clamps or about to get clamped up. And so I clamped this table up about a month ago and it's been dry. And since then when it came out of the clamps the following day, I went ahead and put the rails back on it. Um, so that's basically done most of the reinforcement for the tabletop so that it's nice and secure. But I wanna do one other thing, which is adding some butterfly keys on the bottom here. So I went ahead and cut these two keys out of some walnut I've had. You'll see basically they're in just an hourglass shape. You can call it a loose butterfly shape. And the reason for the shape is that uh, typically these are, these are installed in climatic cracks where the wood wants to dry out and split apart from each other and pull away. And so by having this taper effect, it prevents the wood from pulling past this. But in any event, so we're gonna just install some of these today. Um, and so when you cut these, you're cutting them basically the half the depth of the, the actual surface that you're gonna install them into. And um, you lay them on top of the surface that you're going to install them into, take a pencil and trace them. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use a, a plunger router <clears throat> with a small bit. I'll set the depth of this on the bit of the plunger. We're gonna use the plunger router and we're gonna score out the basic shape and then we'll clean it up uh, to the inside corners and whatnot using a chisel by hand. So um, let me get this set up here and we'll go ahead and clean these out. Um, and using a router on something like this can be a little bit tricky. Some people might choose to do it by hand, but I would say that Basically, a router is going to make pretty quick work of it. You're just going to have to be careful going too far to the edges. Otherwise, you know, you're going to, you're going to make the slot too big because you want the slot for this to be as close to the actual shape as possible so that it sits in there nice and flat and tight on all sides. So um, let me go ahead and resituate the camera and we'll do that now. So at this point, you can see the keys are basically slotted. They're ready to go. They're just sitting in place here. This is a nice, firm, uh, tight fit with both of these. So I've kind of got them popped in there. Um, essentially at this point, we just need to glue them into place. Um, that doesn't take very long. Obviously we'll tap them down, we'll let them sit. And then once that's done, what I'm going to do is flip the tabletop over. Cause what I really need to do at this point is assess what the top of the uh, table is going to look like. Cause I mean, with a table, that's pretty much everything, isn't it? Um, this particular table had a nice patina to it, but it also had an issue with sun bleaching that in so much that somebody kept uh, a centerpiece on this table for a, at least at some point for a while while the rest of the table got exposed to sun and it created a nice bleaching effect, which you get in mahogany, especially antiques. Um, and you'll get that really nice golden patina that, that uh, uh, you know, accumulates on the surface there. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, with this split through the top and then the fact that you had that centerpiece on the table, the top's discolored. So it might be a good idea at this point to um, resurface the top a bit and then do a French polish on it. Generally speaking, I would say with antiques, you don't want to do that if you've got a prime condition antique. Um, but since this one had some issues and it's got some scratches and things of that nature, it might be a good time to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all this uh, debris out of here <laughs> and we're going to glue these butterfly keys into place and we'll flip the tabletop over and then let's assess that. All right, here as I'm looking across the table surface, um, the, this ridge here uh, needed to be leveled out a little bit more. Uh, the boards have worked on the right and left-hand side. Also, you know, you got this dark spot in the center that didn't get aged properly and have that same golden patina around the rest of the surface. Um, and the patina scratched. You can see here all over the top, you got scratches on the right and the left. So the table's um, surface is really bad off. It has to be redone. So. Once we'll get this flat all the way, I'll have to take the top back down with the planer, clean it up a bit, um, 
and then sand it smooth really well with a, like a fest tool get it down to about 320 and then once we get the surface smooth and level it's gonna have to be polished again all right so now i have this table basically completely stripped off i went ahead and did that yesterday i've got it prepped completely here um, it's already been grain filled um, and as you can see it's a nice mahogany surface now to be fair i really don't like stripping antiques especially nice tabletops that have a nice golden hue for a patina, but sometimes it's just required. Um, in this particular instance, the table belongs to me, so there's no concern of that. Um, I'm gonna sell the table and I'll make good money on this table. It's a really gorgeous table, and as you can see, the mahogany on it is really, really nice. Um, the only thing we're really losing is the nice golden patina, but since the tabletop had some scratch issues and it had some staining and stuff, I think honestly, when you consider all of that, this is probably the best case scenario for this particular table. It's really going to increase the value of it overall because it's just going to make it more valuable to a, a potential owner um, so that it's actually going to be used. And that's the idea with these pieces. This is a solid table. It's going to make a great breakfast table for somebody. So um, now that we've got this prepped, what we're going to do is we're going to French polish the surface of this table. This is really straightforward. I've got a couple products. Um, I've covered French polishing in depth and I can get further into detail again if anybody's interested but in this particular time I'm going to not use a custom mix. I'm using Lubricite 77 which is a really great formula. I know the ladies that own this company. They make a fantastic finish. If you're not familiar with this I'll leave a link in the bio but definitely check out Lubricite 77 if you're doing any French polishing. They make a great finish and this new mix that they put out most recently uh, it works really well. I've been using it lately here in Washington DC on my clients pieces and I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and do a, an initial seal coat with a thicker shellac mix, which is essentially the same type of a finish, so they'll blend right into one another. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. I've already got some what we'd call rubbers, but they're just diapers that are charged with um, shellac um, for polishing. So I've already got a couple here, and when you're doing this French polishing, you should watch some of my other videos if you have any questions, but essentially it's just a hand rub finish that you apply over excessive coat, uh, successive coats. So you start with the one initial coat to get it sealed and then as you go you're going to build the finish. So I'm going to go ahead, this shouldn't take very long, this is a small table, shouldn't take any more than an hour to get initial coat on this, it should be really good. And then it's going to have to dry overnight. Tomorrow I'll come in again and I'll check it, probably do a, a, a final uh, polish on the surface and that should be basically um, it and this should be wrapped up. So let's go ahead and jump into this, like I said I'm going to do a, an initial seal coat here, so let's mix this up a bit. Um, the only thing you really need when you're doing these types of finishes is you're going to need um, some good cloths. You're going to need um, a lubricant. I like to use um, General Finishes Orange Oil. Again, I'll leave a link here in the description. This is a great um, all over orange oil that even the homeowner can use, average homeowner. For, I use this at my house just for cleaning my, my furniture. It's a really great um, orange oil product or oil product in general anyway. Um, and you can buy that on Amazon. So, and these rags I've got are already pretty well used. Um, so they're kind of charged to begin with. So let me crack this bottle open here, or this can rather, and we'll go ahead and do this. And you'll see as I start to put this out, this goes pretty quickly, especially on a nice closed table like this one is. It's an antique table. This table is probably from, I would say, the um, middle to early 19th century. It's probably tables, um, I would guess, most likely around 1830, 1840 in that ballpark. So I'm just charging this in, into the fluid here. <laughs> I don't have any latex gloves so we're going to do this old school. So I'm going to get a nice polished palm while I'm at it. So I'm just going to put some of this on here and I'm going to put a couple drops of the orange oil right on top of my rag. And the point of the orange oil, if you're unfamiliar with it, is to keep the rag from sticking because these finishes are very sticky. And so as I get, put this on you're going to see that color really come to life here. And this finish is going to drink into this wood quite a bit until we start to build it up. But you're seeing, that you'll, you'll be a finish right in front of your eyes here. You're going to really enjoy this. So I'm just going really thick. I'm not trying to um, do anything here other than just put an even coat of finish over top of this surface. And so I'm going to keep doing this until I get sort of like a full coverage on this. And then I'll give that maybe two minutes to sort of harden and then we'll start to go over top of that and really polish this in. The mahogany on this has got such a nice grain uh, uh, pattern in it that 
Okay, so I've got the one side, basically with one seal coat. We're gonna spin this around and do the opposite, same thing on this other side here. This won't take very long. So far, we're not even five minutes into this process of putting this finish on this tabletop. I gotta say, the, the surface is really well done though. At this point, um, when I prepped this down, I hand planed this uh, tabletop again because it had a, a bit of a, a ridge issue here in the center and I planed it down with the number seven planer, as you can see here. And once I got the surface back to level, I went ahead and sanded it down as well um, using the Festool and I just took it down um, to 320 grit and I'm polishing over top of that. And the surface has um, got one, one layer of grain fill on it, no stain whatsoever. This is the natural color of the wood. This is a really nice Honduran mahogany. Just get that nice uh, golden tones when they age. I think it's the uh, more the Santo Domingo versions of the, or, uh, of the species of mahogany that darken a bit, but this this uh, this blonde color is the Honduran. Looks really nice. All right, so I'm just trying to be even with this, and I'm I don't want to have uh, big uh, you know like drips or blobs on the sides here because it'll it'll affect the the overall look when we're done. So we're just trying to be uniform with this, I'm going from end to end, and putting seal coat in this. I can feel my rag dragging a bit, so I'm gonna add just a dab of the orange oil. And just continuing on through the board here. So I think these antique uh, breakfast tables are really nice tables, are fairly common. You see them a lot. I have a lot of clients in Washington that utilize these tables in their space still to this day. They're not uh, just pretty tables to look at. They're actually very functional. Um, being that most of them are tilt tops, I think that's a very uh, big part of the reason why they're still used because you can easily roll them up out of the way if you need to. Um, and they're really well made, they hold up. So this one, um, this one in particular, I don't remember where I got this one. I, I get all my uh, inventory at auctions, various auctions, uh, mostly along the East Coast. Um, I pick up antiques from auction in Atlanta, New York City, um, Philadelphia, here in the DC area, there's several auction houses I buy from. Um, Actually, that's where this one was. Now I think about it, I got this one here in DC. This came out of a, an auction house in Montgomery County, Maryland, which is, if you're not from the DC area, it's basically the north side of, of Washington is Montgomery County, Maryland. So we're talking Bethesda, Chevy Chase, uh, Rockville, uh, Potomac, Maryland. Um, anyway, all right. Okay, so that's one coat with the shellac. Um, now I'm gonna, just give that a second. This stuff dries extremely fast. That shellac will be dry to the touch here in about a minute. A lot of the technique in French polishing is simply keeping your rag moving. You keep your diaper moving across the surface and knowing when it's time to charge your rubber and when it's time to polish out the material that's been deposited on the surface. Once you get the feel for that, it, it's really pretty simple. In this particular table, like I said, is made of really nice mahogany boards. All right, then you can see that's starting to blend in. So I'll start to do this circle padding here. And again, just continuing to build the finish. and I'm being fairly uniformed with this. I wanna make sure I get even coverage to the table. And 
And French polishing, honestly, it's just a slow process. Oh, it's not too slow. It doesn't take forever, but it's um, it's much different than uh, sprayed finishes. Sprayed finishes, you know, you shoot them on, you let them harden, they'll chemically flash. Some cabinet shops will actually put them in a bake room where they'll heat the finish. Um, but that's typically a one or two application kind of a situation where they'll shoot it one time, maybe twice, put a seal coat, and then go over it. Whereas in French polishing, it's just a different a different method. So it takes a little bit longer, but it's no rush. It's an enjoyable process. You know, it's good for uh, it's good for your shoulders and your biceps. It's good for contemplation and <laughs> meditation. So again, the, the reason I'm smacking my hand here, as I've mentioned before, is you're, you're basically just trying to push the fluid deeper into the rag. You don't necessarily want it sitting right on the surface when you drop your rag down to the top of the table or whatever surface you happen to be polishing at the time. And you'll see how quickly, I mean, we've been doing this for not even 10 minutes and you can see that there's already a finish starting to get built. You can see the comparison of the two sides here. And it's kind of a back and forth. You know, a little bit of circle padding. Once you get it laid out, do a coat of that, a round of that, and then you come back and go from end to end across, uh, along with the grain lines. And once you have nice even coverage, you can let it sit and dry. I generally like to get it mostly done before I let it dry overnight. So I'll probably do a finish like this. Um, table this big usually doesn't take me any more than 35, 40 minutes to put my initial finish on it. Uh, and of course this is going to have to dry overnight for sure. And honestly on a table like this where it's mine, it's going to stay, it's going to stay in my showroom until it gets sold. I'll probably continually polish it. Um, I'll get my initial polish on here and make it look really good so that I can get it listed for sale on my first dibs page, which by the way, if you guys are not, um, haven't searched my, uh, first dibs page, there's a link on my bio there and I'll definitely make sure I put a link down in the description. You can check out my first dibs page and shop all my inventory. And if you're ever in the DC area, uh, if you're in Maryland, feel free to swing into our shop. I'm generally open um, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays about 10 to 6. But of course, you can buy online anytime you like. Anyway. All right, so that's a pretty good first coat here. All right, so I've got basically one coat of uh, French polishing on this table surface. It's come out pretty well for the most part. Um, it's like I said, it's got to dry overnight. So this will dry and then when I come and check it again, maybe tomorrow or in a day or two, um, I'll probably go over the surface with some steel wool, maybe some uh, 600 grit wet or dry paper, and then I'll just repeat this process of French polishing and rubbing out the finish. And on the final process, uh, coat rather, what I'll do is I'll clean it off with some denatured alcohol. So if you guys enjoy this content, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Don't hesitate to send me a DM if you have any questions. Um, and also ring that notification bell. You'll get updated anytime I post a new video. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. If you're not interested, you can always unsubscribe later. So you're not married to this decision. Um, plus it helps me out so much. In any event, I hope you guys are enjoying and stick around for the final scene and you'll see how this table turns out. All right guys, well that concludes this particular restoration. Um, I really enjoyed the process on this particular table. It actually took me longer to film the re restoration than it did to actually complete the work. Um, but it is a fun process. I, I like getting into these videos and making them. It's a little bit of extra effort running my regular business plus the YouTube channel, but it is a lot of fun. Um, this particular table is from the English Regency period, which is from 1795 to 1837. I feel like this particular period produced some of the finest English antiques. I really like the refined style of the engine end of the Georgian period. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, but in any event, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.